Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at portuguesepod101.com. Oi, gente! Eu sou a Paloma. Nessa aula, nós vamos falar sobre a data mais romântica e especial para todos os apaixonados, o Dia dos Namorados. Você sabia que o Dia dos Namorados é comemorado numa data diferente da maioria dos países no Brasil? Nós vamos descobrir o porquê disso e o que é que os casais e os solteiros fazem nesse dia. Quais apelidos carinhosos são comumente usados para referir-se à pessoa amada no Brasil? Nós vamos dar a resposta no final desse vídeo. Enquanto na maioria dos países o Dia dos Namorados é comemorado no dia de São Valentim, no Brasil comemora-se na véspera do dia de Santo Antônio, dia 12 de junho. Esse santo português é muito venerado no Brasil e invocado para conseguir casamentos, porque em suas pregações religiosas, Santo Antônio sempre falava da importância do casamento e do amor. Ele é conhecido como o santo casamenteiro. A maioria dos casais trocam presentes, chocolates, flores e cartões nesse dia, para demonstrar o amor que sentem. Mas alguns casais de namorados fazem um plano mais elaborado. Alguns vão ao seu restaurante favorito, outros preferem ir ao cinema, tem gente que prepara uma viagem romântica. Mas no final, o importante é passar esse dia ao lado de quem você ama. Esse dia também é esperado por alguns solteiros e solteiras que estão à procura de alguém para casar mas de uma forma um pouco diferente. Eles fazem simpatias com a imagem do Santo Antônio, para encontrar um namorado ou conseguir uma pessoa amada. As simpatias normalmente maltratam o santo, deixando-o de ponta cabeça ou separando-o do menino Jesus, até o santo conseguir o um marido para elas. A teoria mais provável para o início do feriado no Brasil é a de que foi o publicitário João Dória que bolou o feriado, influenciado pelo dia de São Valentim para aquecer as vendas do mês de junho, um mês fraco para o comércio. E agora eu vou revelar a resposta do quiz. Quais apelidos carinhosos são comumente usados para referir-se à pessoa amada no Brasil? Além do comum amor, outros apelidos podem ser amoreco, mori, fofo, fofinho, minha vida, meu bebê, Paixão, coração, chuchuzinho, flor de maracujá, a lista é infinita. Muitas pessoas gostam de criar sua forma original de chamar o seu amado. Boa tarde, gente, tudo bom? Paloma here. Welcome to another Top Portuguese Words. Today's topic is Top 10 phrases you need for a date. Um encontro, a date. Você gostaria de sair para jantar comigo? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? You can also just say, você gostaria de jantar comigo? Would you like to have dinner with me? The answers could be, claro, of course, or... Desculpa, eu estou ocupada. I'm sorry, I'm busy. Você está livre neste fim de semana? Are you free this weekend? This phrase doesn't have any romantic meaning, so you can also just ask your friend or your co-worker. Você está livre neste fim de semana? Are you free this weekend? Você gostaria de sair comigo? Would you like to hang out with me? Sair means to leave, but if you say sair com alguém, that would mean to go out or to hang out with someone. Você gostaria de sair comigo? Would you like to hang out or to go out with me? Quer ir ao cinema comigo hoje à noite? Would you like to go to the movies with me tonight? Here, since we are using the verb querer, to want, the answer would be eu quero or eu não quero. I want or I don't want. Você está linda. You look beautiful. You can also say você é linda. You are beautiful. But if you just want to compliment a woman because of her outfit, you'd say você está linda. Posso te ligar amanhã? Can I call you tomorrow? Well, nowadays people don't really call anymore. They just send a WhatsApp. Um WhatsApp or as most people say in Brazil, um zap zap. Posso te mandar um WhatsApp amanhã? Can I send you a WhatsApp tomorrow? There would be a WhatsApp message. Eu te levo para casa. I will drive you home. Eu te levo para casa actually means I will take you home. But you can kind of understand that the person taking you home will probably take you home by car. Or by motorcycle, I don't know. Or by bike. Yeah. <laughs> a que horas a gente se encontra amanhã? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Lá pelas seis. 
around six or não muito cedo, not too early. A gente pode se encontrar de novo? Can we meet again? So if you really like the person and you think your date is going great, you can just ask her or him. A gente pode se ver de novo? Can we meet again? Quer ir para outro lugar? Shall we go somewhere else? If your date is looking bored, you can say, você quer ir para outro lugar? Shall we go somewhere else? Do you want to go somewhere else? But be careful because they might just be bored because of you. I hope not, but well. <laughs> If they say, ai, que eu tenho que voltar para casa. Oh, is that I need to go back home? That might mean that the person is not very happy around you. I'm sorry. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments what phrases do you use when you go to a date in Brazil or with a Brazilian person. See you next time. Tchau, até mais! E aí, galera, beleza? I'm Paloma. Eu sou a Paloma. Welcome to the top 10 most romantic ideas for a date. As 10 ideias mais românticas para um encontro. Candlelit dinner. Jantar à luz de velas. Candlelit dinner. Jantar à luz de velas. Jantar à luz de velas. Comemoramos o nosso aniversário de casamento com um jantar à luz de velas. We celebrated our wedding anniversary with a candlelit dinner. This is one of the most romantic and maybe one of the easiest ways to impress a girl to take her to a candlelit dinner. To go for a walk together. Sair para uma caminhada juntos. To go for a walk together. Sair para uma caminhada juntos. Sair para uma caminhada juntos. Nas férias, a gente sempre saía bem cedinho para uma caminhada juntos. On our vacations, we always went out for a walk in early in the morning. In the sentence, you don't necessarily need to say juntos, together, because it's kind of implied. You can just say, a gente saía para caminhar. We used to go for a walk. To go bowling. Ir ao boliche. To go bowling. Ir ao boliche. Vamos ao boliche hoje à noite? Let's go bowling tonight. Yeah, I go sometimes, but I'm not good at all. <laughs> to go to the aquarium. Ir ao aquário. To go to the aquarium. Ir ao aquário. O que, que você acha de irmos visitar o aquário neste final de semana? How about visiting the aquarium together this weekend? And that's a very nice place for a date. Um aquário. An aquarium. In São Paulo, I remember there is an aquarium in Santos City. That is a city in the coast of São Paulo. To go to the opera. Ir à ópera. To go to the opera. Ir à ópera. Preciso comprar um vestido novo porque eu vou à ópera hoje à noite com o Paulo. I need to buy a new dress because I'm going to the opera with Paulo tonight. I've never been to opera, but yeah, I think that would be a nice place for a fancy, fancy date. Um encontro chiquérrimo. <laughs> to go to the zoo. Ir ao zoológico. To go to the zoo. Ir ao zoológico. Ir ao zoológico. A gente foi ao zoológico ontem passar o dia. Yesterday, we went to the zoo to spend the day. I really like zoos and I think they are a nice place for families, for dates, for taking your cousins. Yeah, I really like to go to the zoo. Ir ao zoológico. To have a picnic. Fazer um piquenique. To have a picnic. Fazer um piquenique. Fazer um piquenique. Vamos fazer um piquenique no Jardim Botânico? Só eu e você. O que, que você acha? Let's have a picnic at the Botanical Garden. Just you and me. What do you think about it? That's a very nice way to ask someone to go out with you. To have dinner and go to the movies. Jantar e ir ao cinema. To have dinner and go to the movies. Jantar e ir ao cinema. Jantar e ir ao cinema. Vou sair para jantar com o Felipe hoje. Depois queremos ir ao cinema, mas ainda precisamos escolher o filme. I'm going out to dinner with Felipe today. Then we'd like to go to the movies. 
but we still need to choose the movie. This is like the most basic date I have in mind, to have dinner and then go to the movies. What kind of movie would you like to see in a date? To take a ferry ride. Passear de barco. To take a ferry ride. Passear de barco. Vamos passear de barco em Ilha Bela? Assim, curtimos o dia bem juntinhos. Let's take the ferry ride to Ilha Bela. This way, we can spend the day together. To walk on the beach. Caminhar na praia. To walk on the beach. Caminhar na praia. Caminhar na praia. Todas as manhãs, caminhamos juntos de mão dadas na praia. Every morning, we walk together in the beach holding hands. That's also another nice expression, de mãos dadas, holding hands. Well, if you have the chance to go to the beach, it's already very romantic, but it's like a dream come true to be walking around the beach holding hands with your loved one. Com seu amado, a sua amada. É tudo por hoje. That's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Obrigada por assistir. And let us know in the comments how would it take your Brazilian girlfriend or boyfriend to a date. Até mais. Tchau. Bom dia, gente. Tudo bom? My name is Paloma. Welcome to Top Portuguese Words. Today's topic is five amazing love quotes from Brazilian songs. Amor é fogo que arde sem se ver. É ferida que dói e não se sente. É um contentamento descontente. É dor que desatina sem doer. Love is a fire that burns unseen. A wound that aches yet is unfelt. And always discontent contentment. A pain that rages without hurting. Let's start with a poem from Luiz Vaz de Camões. It's also in the song Monte Castelo from Legião Urbana, a rock band. Amor é fogo que arde sem se ver, é ferida que dói e não se sente. É um contentamento descontente, é dor que desatina sem doer. Love is a fire that burns unseen, a wound that ages yet isn't felt, and always discontent contentment, a pain that rages without hurting. It's very poetic, right? Legião Urbana was a very famous rock band in Brazil and they don't exist anymore, but many, many young people still know them. Você é assim, um sonho pra mim. E quando eu não te vejo, eu penso em você desde o amanhecer até quando eu me deito. You are like this, a dream to me. And when I don't see you, I think of you, from dawn to when I lie down. Velha infância, tribalistas. Você é assim, um sonho para mim. E quando eu não te vejo, eu penso em você. Desde o amanhecer até quando eu me deito. You are like this, I dream to me. And when I don't see you, I think of you. From dawn until I lie down. That's so cute, right? I love this song. Tripalistas is a pop rock band and they had many hit songs in Brazil. Eu sei que eu vou te amar. Por toda a minha vida eu vou te amar. Em cada despedida eu vou te amar. Desesperadamente eu sei que eu vou te amar. I know that I'll love you. As long as I'm living, I'll love you. In every goodbye said, I will love you. Desperately, I know that I'll love you. Eu sei que vou te amar. Vinícius de Moraes. Just by the title, you know that the song is gonna make you cry, right? <laughs> eu sei que eu vou te amar. Por toda a minha vida, eu vou te amar. Em cada despedida, eu vou te amar. Desesperadamente, eu sei que eu vou te amar. If you don't know any word in Portuguese today, you've memorized amar, to love. I know that I'll love you. As long as I'm living, I'll love you. In every goodbye said, I'll love you. Desperately, I know that I'll love you. 
That's one of the most romantic songs we have in Brazilian Portuguese. This song was created by Vinícius de Moraes and Tom Jobim, which was one of the creators of Bossa Nova. Por você, eu dançaria tango no teto. Eu limparia os trilhos do metrô. Eu iria a pé do Rio a Salvador. For you, I would dance tango in the ceiling. I would clean the subway tracks. I would walk from Rio to Salvador. Por você, Barão Vermelho, which translates to for you. Por você, eu dançaria tango no teto. Eu limparia os trilhos do metrô. Eu iria a pé do Rio a Salvador. For you, I would dance tango in the ceiling. I would clean the subway tracks. I would walk from Rio to Salvador. That's a very long walk. <laughs> Barão Vermelho was a very famous rock band in the 90s in Brazil. Acontece que na vida a gente tem que ser feliz por ser amado por alguém. Porque eu te amo, eu te adoro, meu amor. It turns out that in life we have to be happy to be loved by someone. Because I love you, I adore you, my love. Não quero dinheiro, Tim Maia. I don't want money. Acontece que na vida a gente tem que ser feliz por ser amado por alguém. Porque eu te amo, eu te adoro, meu amor. It turns out that in this life we have to be happy to be loved by someone. Because I love you, I adore you, my love. Tim Maia passed away in 1998 but he was very famous because of his very strong and distinctive voice. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you fell in love with Portuguese and Brazil. And let us know if you have any questions. What is your favorite love song in Portuguese? Até a próxima. Tchau, tchau. Hi, everyone. Do you know how to say I love you in Portuguese? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Eu te amo. Eu te amo. Eu te amo. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say... Eu tenho uma queda por você. Eu tenho uma queda por você. Eu tenho uma queda por você. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say... Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Portuguese. Does having a study partner help you learn a language faster? For most people, having a friend or romantic partner who is a native speaker of their target language dramatically improves their ability to master the language. In this video, we'll talk about some ways to help you build relationships with people. We'll also talk about three reasons having a native speaker partner can improve your language fluency. First, knowing a native speaker helps you better understand the culture. Knowing a native speaker gets you connected with the culture in ways that no lessons or textbooks ever could. Native speakers are better informed about the latest slang expressions and know interesting places to eat and hang out. Having a friend or partner who is a native speaker can dramatically improve your understanding of the language. In addition to language, you can learn about cultural practices, gestures, and relationships. Second, having a native speaker partner increases your exposure to the language. Practice makes perfect is a well-known expression that is certainly true for language learning. When you have a friend, romantic partner, or study buddy, you speak to them through text messages, phone calls, and basic interaction. These are all opportunities for you to practice the language. Making an effort to practice will help your vocabulary quickly expand beyond simple greetings, flirtatious words, and basic comments to deeper, more meaningful conversations. Third, a supportive partner is the best study aid you can find. We all make mistakes, especially when trying to learn a new language. But if you have a supportive partner, they can gently point out your mistakes and help you find better ways to express yourself. 
And if your native speaker study partner is also your romantic partner, your motivation will likely be even higher than someone who does not have a romantic relationship with a native speaker. Now, let's look at three ways our language learning program helps you learn even faster if you have a native speaker partner. First, all resources and materials are available in English and in your target language. Studying with a partner is special because it's an opportunity for both of you to learn a new language. That's why every single lesson, transcript, vocabulary list, and resource on our website is available in English and in your target language. You can learn from each other. Second, lessons are designed to help you understand and engage with culture. On our website, our focus is to help our students learn practical vocabulary and phrases that are actually used in everyday conversation. This means that from your very first lesson, you can start applying what you learn immediately. So if you want to go out to a restaurant, play games, or attend a social function with your partner, you'll have the vocabulary and phrases necessary to have a great time. Third, access to special resources dedicated to romantic phrases. If your study partner is your romantic partner, we have resources to help you communicate your feelings correctly. Our language learning program has special sections and tools to teach you love words, phrases, and cultural insights. Of course, please remember that simply being in a relationship is no substitute for studying. Communication is key to every relationship, whether romantic or not. If you fail to continue expanding your vocabulary and you stop learning the language on your own, your relationships may suffer or fizzle out. Without question, spending time with native speakers can help you dramatically improve your language proficiency. But this is no replacement for focused studying. It's essential to help facilitate better communication and master the language. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Being able to speak freely with native speakers is an amazing ability in itself. But being able to speak freely to a whole new group of people opens you up to possible new relationships. Most people don't realize that spending the time to build relationships in a foreign language can actually help you improve your language skills dramatically. In this video, we look at how making relationships in a foreign language can help you learn the language faster. The benefits of having friends and partners who speak a foreign language. First, it's motivational. One of the greatest struggles for anyone learning a second language is motivation. Nine times out of 10, learners start out their language learning journey with loads of enthusiasm, only to see it gradually wane over time. Try as they may, it's difficult to maintain the spark they once shared with their new language. So why not borrow energy from a different part of your life? When you make relationships with people in your target language, all the excitement of a new relationship carries directly over into your learning. Suddenly, you have a very rewarding reason to improve your skills and keep practicing. As your partner or your friends get involved, you will also have the advantage of a constant source of support and encouragement. Second, it makes language learning practical. Studying vocabulary and grammar is a vital part of language learning, whether you use a podcast, textbook, app, or find yourself in a classroom. However, as great as studying is, a language really only starts to come alive once you start using it in everyday life. There's a huge difference between a scripted conversation in a lesson plan and a real-life conversation with a native speaker. Building relationships with native speakers will give you the chance to talk in your target language often. Furthermore, it will be in a way that feels natural. You'll learn the words in the context, which is hugely important. Third, it's fun. One of the greatest benefits is that it allows you to practice without having it feel like practice. Oftentimes, you'll find yourself so wrapped up in the conversation that you forget you're using a foreign language. This takes a lot of the pressure off and helps you focus on communication over trying to speak absolutely perfectly. You also get to learn about a whole new culture from your partner or friends. So you're not only learning language skills, but also about the cultures that surround your target language. The risks of having friends and partners who speak a foreign language. First, it's easy to miscommunicate. When it comes to relationships, humans can easily misunderstand each other. 
So it can be hard when building relationships in your target language when you or your partner's lack of ability in each other's respective native tongue can lead to miscommunications that would otherwise be avoidable. Depending on the language you're speaking, a simple mistranslation or mispronounced word can drastically change the meaning of a sentence. As long as you can afford each other some extra patience and the benefit of the doubt, then you should be able to overcome this pitfall. Second, your language skills could suffer if your relationships don't work out. If all your language practice is wrapped up in one person and your relationship with that person doesn't work out, then your language learning could take a big hit. So it's best not to put all your hopes for language growth on one area, relationship or otherwise. You don't want to risk losing motivation, so try to find it in many different areas. An idea for building relationships in a foreign language. Make games out of getting to know one another. Sometimes, opening up in any new friendship or partnership can be hard. Add in the added struggle of a new language and it can feel impossible to share your true feelings with others. So instead of trying to take first interactions so seriously and talking about the usual things like the weather or work, try to ask new, interesting questions. Try to figure out what the other person's hobbies are without asking directly, or what kind of job they have. This will give you a chance to stretch your language skills in a new way, and you'll probably get some funny answers out of it too. Being comfortable being silly or making language mistakes is a great way to bond with someone, even if you've just met. Relationships in a foreign language have a lot more benefits to offer than drawbacks. Don't be scared to open up to people and make mistakes. And for even more help to build relationships in your target language, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.